Playing with Fire is the latest family comedy that stars John Cena as Superintendent Jake Carson, who is a smoke jumper, and on his team is also John Leguizamo and Keegan Michael Key. And during one of their missions, they find three kids, and while they can't find the kids' parents at the time, they have to take care of the kids until the parents come. And during this time, they find out that the three kids are rather rambunctious, uncontrollable, and so John Cena has to learn to control, take care, and eventually love these kids. And yes, this is the generic story of that mean old man trying to take care and eventually love younger kids that we've seen with the past fire, even the game plan. And yes, this movie is directed by Andy Thickman, the same guy who directed the game plan, so that actually makes sense. But no, Playing With Fire doesn't really add anything new to the genre of this old man trying to take care of younger kids. But it doesn't matter as long as the movie is so enjoyable entertainment for those who watch. And honestly, I can say that Playing With Fire is a horrendous, unfunny, totally inconsistently, horribly written, horribly acted movie that I thought was a pain to get through. I really hated this movie. Playing With Fire is a comedy, and the comedy is the forefront of the movie. It's one of the most important elements, and honestly, I thought that the movie movie didn't really know what type of comedy it wanted to be. Because in the first scene of the movie, we have some of out of this world comedy where even John Cena grabs a flaming branch six inches above someone's head and that person's reaction was, oh wow, thank you. It is unnaturalistic and while that comedy can work, the movie doesn't focus entirely on that comedy, it has different styles of comedy throughout the movie and I just thought all the different clashes of comedy really did not work. Because while you have that unnaturalistic comedy, you also have a lot of irritating comedy that mainly comes from Keegan-Michael Key and John Leguizamo. John Leguizamo Obama's character is basically has two traits. One, he misquotes famous people, and yes, it did get a chuckle out of me a couple times, but really that joke goes on throughout the entire movie and easily overstayed its welcome. And his other characteristic is just that he's emotionally unstable, which I didn't think for once was funny. And Keegan Michael Key's character, I actually thought he was my favorite part of the movie because it's still Keegan Michael Key. His character is basically just a kiss ass to John Cena, but sadly, I thought for the most part he wasn't really that funny. You could tell he just kept on trying to talk and talk until something eventually funny came out, but really, it was just very painful to watch him. But there's certain things that Key and Michael Key does do, especially in the movie. Every time he pops in or out of frame, there is a whoosh noise for him. And I do think that, oh, that's kind of clever. It's fun. It adds a certain style to this movie. But that style isn't really anywhere else in the movie. So while that's a fun idea, it really does nothing for the movie. And that specific element wasn't really that funny. And the other type of comedy in this movie is the childish humor in this movie, which does focus around the three main kids in this movie, which can be done well in movies. But sadly, it was easily the worst part about this movie because I thought not only was the humor really bad in this movie, I thought the kid characters, and especially the acting of the kids, were truly horrendous. And I don't want to say that kid actors are bad, but these kid actors are truly one of the worst I've seen in a very long time. But going back to the kid-focused comedy of the movie, that type of comedy is not original. There's nothing really original in this movie. There is a five-minute poop scene in this movie that one isn't really that funny. Poop scenes can be funny, but not only is it not really that funny in this movie, it's unoriginal. Before doing this review, I watched the trailer for Vin Diesel's The Pacifier, and even in the trailer, there is the exact same poop scene that we have in Playing With Fire, and it just shows that this movie is really not original whatsoever. But going back to the kid actors, yeah, I really hated the kid actors in this movie, and it felt like all three of them just knew they were in a movie, and it really did not work well, because also the kid characters are just so irritating and unredeemable. The youngest daughter in the movie I thought was truly horrendous. All she does is scream and yell, and it felt like every single time she either had to do something or say a line in this movie, it felt like someone literally is saying it to her off screen. I feel bad saying that she did a really bad job, but I honestly think that there had to be some better kid actress out there. And you could say, oh, she's just a cute little three-year-old girl, but honestly, for me, I didn't care. I thought she was so irritating and annoying. And even the middle kid in the movie, I'll say he is a better actor than the youngest daughter in the movie, but his character is so dumb. Even for what, an eight or ten-year-old boy, he just does so many dumb things in this movie. I just can't fathom the fact that someone thought that what this kid does is a good idea. This kid in the firehouse, or whatever you want to call it, grabs these flare guns, thinking that they're Nerf guns, but he's an eight-year-old kid. He should know what Nerf guns are. It doesn't say Nerf on it, and he just starts shooting them at people, not thinking that, oh, these aren't Nerf guns. It is just so fucking stupid. And there's even one part of the movie where he's eating peanut butter straight out of the jar with his bare hand, and then he grabs a car door handle and thinks, oh no, I just ruined the car. How'd you not know you're about to ruin a car when your hand is covered with peanut butter? It is just so stupid and annoying. But honestly, the biggest surprise or disappointment with the kid actors with me is the oldest daughter, Brianna Hildebrand, who is Megasonic Teenage Warhead in the Deadpool series. I like her in the Deadpool movies. I do think she's a good actor, and I don't think she's a bad actor in this movie. I just think her material is so horrible. 
because her character is irritating, irredeemable, and she has a plan in the movie that she thinks is going to work out, but really, it's such a dumb plan that I don't even think that a character of her age, she's probably about 16 years old in the movie, I don't even think a 16-year-old would think that whatever she was doing was a good plan. And the worst thing about all these kid characters is that they do horrible things to these three guys who are trying to save their lives throughout the movie, and none of them really change by the end. They're so the same irritating characters that they are in the beginning of the movie. The only person that really changes is John Cena, who learns to love these kids by the end, and honestly, I wouldn't understand why, because I certainly wouldn't love these kids. And Judy Greer is also in the movie, which is pretty sad, because I thought we were beyond the female protagonist who was just in the movie simply to fall in love with the main character, but... Nope, that is exactly what she is in this movie because she really has nothing else to do in this movie except for fall for John Cena. Which is weird because when we're first introduced to her, she is hating John Cena for understandable reasons. And then about 20 to 30 minutes later when we're reintroduced to her, she is absolutely in love with John Cena for... I don't know what reason, she has nothing else to do, which is her character trait. She loves bullfrogs and she lives in the middle of nowhere with no one, so all she has to do is fall in love with John Cena. It is a horribly written character and I thought we would be better by this by now, but nope. We're still there. And even from a direction point of view, I thought this movie was really poorly directed simply with the cinematography because the cinematography, the framing of certain shots are really bad because there are many shots where people are talking in frame, but they're not entirely in frame. Their head is either not centered, or even cut off on the edge of the frame of the movie. And I'm thinking these people are competent filmmakers, but I don't know why they just couldn't center someone's head in a frame. And the lighting of this movie too, I know it's a lighthearted comedy and should be bright and light, but everything in this movie is really freaking bright. Every part of this firehouse feels like the sun is just beaming on your face. And I'm just thinking, where are the shadows? Because there has to be some type of shadows. Even at a point in the movie when they are outside at night, it is somehow a very well lit night and is very unnaturalistic and it really just took me out of the movie. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I really did not like playing with fire. This movie is just an example for why people wanna stay at home and not go to the theaters. This this movie is really unimaginative, is unfunny, with truly horrendous characters and sadly really bad acting from the younger actors, and I thought that this movie was a real pain to get through. It's not like this movie isn't targeted towards me, because there are still good family comedies out there. Playing of Fire is just not one of those movies, and so I can say that Playing of Fire is just... Ugh. So that's Playing with Fire. What do you guys think? Have you seen the movie? Have you not seen the movie? Whatever you think, put the comments below and maybe I'll read it. Maybe I won't. Thank you as always for watching. And if you haven't, you can click my last video right over here. And you can click my upcoming video right over here. Thank you as always for watching. And hope to see you next time.